Dear scientist, this video will give you a deep understanding of the alkylating agent's structure, function, and the induced resistance. Subscribe to stay updated on cancer biology. We divided the concept into three cycles with increasing level of details. Let's start with the first cycle. Alkylating agents is one of the five families of chemotherapy. Let's explore the function of these agents. Cancer cells are constantly dividing, and the alkylating agent is given to the patient suffering from a tumor to target and kill these cells. But how can these agents kill the cancer cell? After the administration of that chemotherapy to the patient, it travels in the bloodstream and diffuses out to enter the cancer cell, in which it targets the DNA causing a level of damage that will eventually lead to the cell death. As you know, cancer cells that are not receiving any treatment will continue to divide, non-stop, to form what's called a tumor, and upon alkylating agents administration, these tumors will shrink in size but sometimes they become resistant and return to grow again. The question here is, how can cancer cells resist the DNA damage and continue their division? Some cancer cells can adapt and resist the medical treatment by increasing their DNA repairing enzymes. Other cancer cells can adapt by increasing their cellular pumps, flushing out these compounds. Good job, you finished the first cycle. Now let's move to the second one. And we will begin with the same question. What are the alkylating agents? They are chemical compounds that are capable of producing a positively charged reactive alkyl group. They can be bifunctional or monofunctional. The alkyl group can bind to an oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur atom because most often these atoms have partial negative charges. Now let's investigate what are the mechanisms of action of an alkylating agent within the cell. First, in the cytoplasm, the alkyl groups react with cellular proteins, hindering their vital functions. Moreover, they bind with an essential type of proteins that function as a pillow for reactive oxygen species. The alkyl groups consume these protective proteins, leading to an increased free reactive oxygen species. High level of ROS will lead to the cell death by apoptosis. In the nucleus, the alkylating compounds bind with the DNA nucleotides, mostly with the guanine and adenine bases, forming a bipartite structure called adduct. This adduct can be a monoadduct or a crosslink between two nucleotides that can be either on the same strand or between two opposite strands. The bifunctional alkylating agents which have more than one reactive alkyl group in the same molecule are more lethal to the cell and their crosslinks do not allow the double strand separation which is a necessary step for the transcription of a gene and the replication of the DNA. The cell has an arsenal of enzymes with different recognition sites that allow the cell to repair different variety of DNA lesions, naturally occurring from the environment or intentionally induced with chemotherapies. This repair mechanism can only repair a certain level of lesions. If the administered drug exceeded this amount, the cell ability will not be able to mitigate the damage and the cell will undergo what's called a cell cycle arrest. This arrest will give the cell enough time to repair its DNA or undergo an apoptotic death. Cancer cell can increase the level of DNA repair enzymes specific to the type of lesion. It can also resist by increasing the expression of the scavenging or protective proteins known as glutathione's as they have exposed thiol groups that attract the reactive alkyls. Finally, the cell can increase the expression of cellular efflux pumps or decrease the influx channels used by the compound to enter the cell. Good job, you have finished two cycles and only one left to complete the bigger picture. You have to know that there are three types of alkylating agents. The first one is the classical alkylating agent, for example, the nitrogen mustards, which are bifunctional compounds and their reactive alkyl groups are covered with a chloro group at each end. The classical alkylating agents can form a monoadduct or crosslink. The second type of alkylating agents is the non classical compounds. They are characterized by methylating the DNA instead of alkylating it. 
Therefore, they do not form crosslinks. Atemozolomide is an example of this type of reagents. The third type is the alkylating glyc agents. This class contains a platinum element that performs the same binding and cross-linking action of classical agents instead of having a carbon-based alkyl group. If your next research project is on one of the alkylating agents, you have to be aware that not all the classical agents behave in the same way, and each cell type has its own weaknesses and strengths. For example, we have the green alkylating agent is targeting a type of cancer cells, by binding to its guanine base, specifically in the seventh nitrogen atom. If we change the alkylating agent, it may have a different binding site with the guanine. For example, it can bind with the oxygen number six, forming a different structure of adduct. Each type of adduct has its distinct detection and repair mechanisms by the cell. And as we know, alkylating agents can stress the cell via different mechanisms, depending on the cell's capacity to repair the damage whether they are repairing the DNA damage, increasing the glutathione to inhibit its activity, or to increase the efflux transporters. Congratulations, you have successfully finished the three cycles of the alkylating agents. If you are interested in cancer research and you want to have a background on cancer biology, always check in the description for a course that will be available on August 2023. And for now, what do you think? Which is more effective, the alkylating agents or the false analogues?